Welcome to Inside the Cardinal Playbook, and we're going to talk a little bit about last week's homecoming ball game uh, against South Dakota School of Mines. And, uh, Coach, very seldom do you see a game 70-48. Uh, there was a lot of fireworks. Yeah, yeah, I, I can tell you that that's a uh, – you're right. And I think people came to a football game and saw a basketball score, and, uh, you know, obviously neither team goes into the game thinking that one of those games is going to break out. And, and it was uh, it was a cra one of the crazier games I've ever been in, if not the craziest game I've ever been in, in my life. And in the fact where you, you you do a lot of really good things, and you don't think there's enough possessions in a football game in a 60-minute span to be able to run enough plays to score on you know, you know 16 touchdowns all together. And holy cow! Um, but you know, as we go back and look at it, there's there's extreme amount of positive stuff, but. It, we're just we're we were extremely inconsistent in a lot of areas, and and uh, I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but you know what I told our our team on uh, Sunday afternoon in meetings was, you know I just asked them I, at first I said hey 528 yards of total offense, and I asked one of the players on offense I said hey, so and so have you ever been in a game where you've you you the offense you were part of turned the ball over five times and won, and they said no sir. I said, okay. In defense, I went to the defensive side and I said, four takeaways. You set up three scores, two on the one yard line, right. one on the 22 yard line. So you set three scores up inside the red zone. You take the ball away four times. You're 70% efficient on third down. But have you ever, and I asked one of the defensive players, so and so, have you ever won a football game when you've given up 12 plus explosive plays on defense that means big runs or big passes and they said no sir and uh, you know we talked about some things in special teams and I asked one of our special teams players about some inconsistencies we had there which is really out of the norm for us yes that, it is. that's been a that, place that miss extra point was yeah, a yeah and, and we, we kicked the ball out of bounds one time we, we drove a kick and just some some different things we didn't field punts and and uh, but you know and, and credit and credit uh, you know South Dakota Mines too. They they weren't going to kick it to number three, right. and you know the ball was on the ground a little bit more than we would have liked there, and and there was some field position change. But that's been an area we've been really consistent in, and and uh, so while there's a lot of really good things, you know the, the the statistics of this game over a long period of time still say you turn the ball over five times you're going to lose, and there's no asterisk that says only if you have this many yards of offense no i mean you've turned the ball over five times you're going to lose and defensively you have 12 plus explosive plays you give up 12 plus explosive plays no matter how good you were on third down no matter how well you took the ball away no matter how many scores you set up it doesn't you, th those are, aren't games you're going to win if you're it if doesn't you're, balance no it doesn't it what, just, what you're saying if if you don't know the game of football it simply doesn't balance i think also coach and i want your input on this i think you got to throw penalties in the ball yeah game. yeah penalties is a big part of it too and you know the the only reason you know the penalties wasn't a, you know it's always a big focus for us when you have a lot when you have as many penalties we, as we did but they had as many as we did or more and th that was the only maybe offset to it but you know, still we can't we can't have 80 plus yards of penalties and win consistently, and that's that's out of character for us. You know, over the last several years, we've been one of the teams in our conference that's had the least amount of penalties, and and uh, whatever it was about the day, about the you think the stars, the, the environment, the whatever it was, you know, they they had a lot of penalties, we had a lot of penalties, and and you know, those are both things that both coaching staffs, I'm sure that you know, know we need to correct. Well, we're going to have Ryan on a little bit later in the mm -hmm. show, and we'll talk about the offense. It, it had to be a highlight, though. You know, I uh, was talking to people over at Arrowhead on Sunday, and uh, we were talking about I told them about, you know, one team had 555, and the other right. 528, and what's 118 points scored. Because right. everybody saw the score in the mm -hmm. paper, wanted to know how long the game lasted and stuff. A long time. And I said, it, you know, what, what I liked and took from it, and I'd like for you to comment, we were down, and we were talking about this earlier, twice by three scores when we came back. Yeah, and, and that's, that's the crazy thing about it is, you know, we show we have the ability to be that productive on both sides of the ball in, in special teams because we do it at spurts, and we do it so well in spurts. We do it dominantly in spurts, uh, but the consistency of it, and I keep going back to this, the consistency has eluded us. Uh, to this point, you know, since we've been here, we've—that's the thing that we have been able, unable to do 
has consistently put good plays together throughout the course of a game and then throughout the course of a several game stretch. And, uh, you know, the closest to it was, you know, probably two years ago when we won our last three games of, this, uh, right. of the year. Had and we run. had a lot of seniors that year. Now, they were, you know, guys that were, were here as NAIA players and those things. But, you know, seniors, you know, tend to, whatever for whatever reason, you, you've seen this through teams that you've coached through the years, those seniors, those senior-heavy teams, for whatever reason, even if they're maybe not as physically gifted as some of the other teams you've had, for whatever reason, they find a way. Mm -hmm. They find a way to win. And because they've been there and done that. Yeah, but we don't have time to, to wait for, you know, a, a class of 25 seniors. That's not coming for a couple of years. We've got, to, we've got to learn to do it now. Yeah, and I think it, it, it is an environment and it's a setting and it's a mentality that the team has to take on. I always preach in our coaches show mm -hmm. here. I also preach on Saturdays when we visit right. after the games, and, I, and I'm straight up with you guys. You guys have to learn how to win. No doubt about it. And, and, and that's exactly where you're at. Yep. And whatever a change will come about is when they really feel in their heart, that wasn't an adverse situation. I'm going to make the next play, and we're going to win this. Exactly. You're 100% It's correct. easy to talk about it, and it's hard to do. It was great to see us come out, and we score on the first drive. Great 10-play drive, score on the first drive, and then second play of our defensive drive, Jack Bissonette picks it off and returns it to the one-yard line. We score again. You know, there's, what, five minutes off the clock, and we're up 14 nothing. And then, you know, they, they're they going to swing back, and they did. And, and, you know, we've got it, and it was punch for punch for a while, and they went up three points or three touchdowns at the beginning of the third quarter. We come back and tie it at the beginning of the fourth. And, you know, that, those are the games you know, and, and you don't have as much. You got, no, I'm you know, and It's okay to say I'm gone. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a, in the field. Any more of this, and mine's going to be gone, and there's not much up there anyway, but – but uh, it is, is a crazy, crazy uh, environment in a game like that, and, and uh, we've got to figure out a way to win it. Well, we're going to come back for the next segment of Inside the Cardinal uh, Playbook, and we'll talk a little bit uh, about all three phases of ga game, and I think that you've already touched upon. We'll get a little bit deeper in what's going on in all three phases. If y'all going to be great on that field, you got to have a why. you got to have a reason for why you do what you do. I'm about to come here and blame y'all. Follow my lead, baby, and we're going to win this thing. What's your why? Why do you wake up in the morning? Why do you put on that jersey? Why do you go out and practice? I ain't bothered with this opportunity. Foreclosure. Repossession. Garnishment. Costello and Farah can fight for you. Are creditors threatening to take your property or your money? My office has helped thousands of people in the Kansas City area protect their assets through debt reorganization or bankruptcy protection. Call my office at 816-505-HELP and see if we can help you protect your assets and get you back on your feet. The attorneys of Costello and Farah, lawyers who will fight for you. Call 816-505-HELP today. Tanner's is new to Liberty, just south of the Highway 152 and I-35 intersection. Their happy hour specials every day are served from two different areas, and the patio section is now enclosed for meetings or other gatherings. Join us home football Saturdays for the Cardinal Live postgame show with head football coach Jared Cruzy, and come in any day for food specials in the spacious dining area. Tanner's of Liberty, just south of the Highway 152 and I-35 intersection. Welcome back to this segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. And, and Coach, it wouldn't be any different if me and you, which, which happened Saturday, we're sitting yeah. here talking after the game over a couple of pops uh, about defense. And, uh, I, and I know you feel the same way I do, so I'm going to ask this question. Yeah. Stopping the run. Yeah. I know that it, it really, Coach Williams and yourself, mm -hmm. it really it bothered you that you couldn't right. you struggled stopping the run the other night. Right. It, we've, again, we've been inconsistent there. We've, we go to the Valpo game, we we give up only 26 yards of, in the rushing game. And there's, there's moments in the McKendry game and in Saturday's game where it's stone the run, stone the run, stone the run, and three and outs. And, you know, a couple series on Saturday where that was the case in the, in the uh, third quarter and in the in beginning of the fourth quarter where there's some really dominant defense against the run. You know, our problem has been, you know, missing tackles in the run game. And 
Yeah. You know, You've been kind at, of upset with the tackling for the last two weeks. Yeah, and, and it was, I'll tell you what, it was better last week. It was better last week, but it's got to be in the box. It's got to be 100%. And, you know, that's what everybody strives for. Point. Does it ever get there? Probably not, but it's got to be a heck of a lot better than what it's been. Yeah. And you can say, you can talk all you want about, hey, coach, you, you're playing sophomores and freshmen on the defensive line, and we are, but at the end of the day, we've got to be able to make plays in the front and uh, in the run game. And, you know, that's, that's defensive line, linebackers, safeties, corners, everybody. Everybody who has an opportunity to affect the play in the run game. And, and you know what we do defensively, and it's very multiple, and different guys are in different situations, and, and we just haven't been consistent at doing that. And it, the funny thing you go back to, it's not just one player. Uh, and that's been a huge focus for us. And we focused on it last week in practice and got better on Saturday in that area at times, uh, you know, and it'll be a continued focus for us going forward until we get it fixed. Well, the, that was enough, enough of the negative. Uh, now the positive. Messer, I had an opportunity to interview him at the coach's yeah. uh, show after the ball game, yeah. met his family. Uh, really, this is what we're looking for, I think, at William Jewell. He got beat. We were in cover two, and for those people who don't understand what happens, the middle linebacker's got to take the deep uh, middle right. away. And he got beat. He was short on the coverage, and he hit him in yep. front of the safety for a big first down mm -hmm. on drop. But he, then he makes, and that means that he is listening, right. he is getting better, makes two great interceptions. Why don't you talk about the positive? He does. And, and uh, you know, we've, we've been looking for the guy to take a hold of the defense and have a a breakout game like that. Now, number one has. Jack Bissonette's had a couple games sure like is. that. But, you know, in the position that he plays where he's on you the edge of the defense. You want that to be a leader. You know, we're looking. And Jimmy, and Jimmy DeStefano's been productive. You know, he's been inconsistent at times, but he's been productive. But it was great to see Nick. And really, this is Nick's first year really playing. Last year, he played in a couple games, but had some unfortunate injuries that didn't allow him really to get in and be a college football player. So these first couple games stretch, and he misses a game, you know, because of heat and, and some of those things for the first for the first game and the second game. But it was really good to see him get in there and be a lot more comfortable and start directing traffic and getting guys lined up. And but and comes then, with playing right and making plays when he has them to make. And you know, a, a huge positive, I and mean, you touched on it, is when something when he when something doesn't happen quite like it should right. that he can understand what happened where should i be next time and like we saw him do go out and and undercut two balls and have two interceptions and, and great some plays. great return yardage and now he needs to hang on to it on the returns he needs to put the thing away and hang on to it but you know the fact that he's in those positions making those plays and you know in fumble recovery and in you know those things being around the ball he was extremely active on saturday well and i i think too uh, talking about defense and give him another positive in the secondary Overall, in the games that we've had this year, I think they've been pretty solid. Yep. I really have. I really thought uh, Trent, uh, Trey Talley did a great job of coming up and filling yep. the alley on about three or four occasions where it could have even got uglier. He's worked he really good hard plays. at it. He's worked really hard at it. He, if you remember, he has one on the second series of the game where he, where he misses a tackle and right. gets a little bit of a stinger on it and comes out for a few plays. After that, he was lights out as far as tackling and tackling physically and really saved us on some things and made some really nice plays. He wants it really bad right now, and he's what everybody doesn't see is the time and the effort he's putting in, and not just him, a lot of them right now, to get better and get things corrected uh, in a lot of phases right now. And that's, that's the exciting thing as we look forward you know, to this week's game against Hayes and going on the road is you know, the preparation that goes into it you know, as, you know, before game day. And the, when you get to the game, you're hoping that you've already played it, essentially, and now it's just going out and doing it, that right. you understand and you know and understand where you're supposed to be in each situation and how to adjust in each situation in your play. Well, in the last segment, we'll get into that. We'll talk a little bit about our game with Fort A State, and uh, we'll be back with you for our last segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook in just a minute. Hi, this is Kurt again with MetroFreeStuff.com. Please check us out today for all the local businesses we support here in the Liberty area. We have over 10 businesses and we're growing each day. Visit us today at www.metrofreestuff.com. One of our frees, a big free in 2012, is our free networking events that we're hosting for local community organizations and small businesses. Come join us today. Visit www.metrofreestuff.com to find out more. 
Friday nights on Metro Sports. The Honda High School Roundup brings you all the local and regional action. Join Mick Schaefer and Kenitra Pulliams and get the latest on your high school teams, athletes, and more, including in-depth analysis and behind-the-scenes looks at your hometown stars. Meet the coaches and the area's top recruits. It's the Honda High School Roundup every Friday night at 10, only on Metro Sports, a Time Warner Cable sports channel. Cardinal fans, welcome back to another segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. And uh, we've got uh, Ryan Mage, the offensive uh, coordinator here at uh, William Joe College. And Coach, you have to be, even though it's, it was a, a loss, uh, you have to be pretty excited about some of the things that your offense is doing. You had 528 yards total offense. Uh, I thought you moved the ball on the ground with a couple different backs. You were able to dump it off. And then you had a little uh, uh, adversity with uh, Sean getting hurt, and Balazs came in and did a great job. So wherever you want to start, there's a lot of positive on your side of the ball. Well, there, there really was a lot of positives with the fact that it's, it's been improving every week. And so you know, that's something we always talk to the guys about is that, you know, especially after Valparaiso when we had a very, you know, productive day was, hey, guys, keep going. This isn't where right. we should be. We got to keep going. It's a process, and, exactly. And um, you know, there was also a few turnovers there in that game that we want back, and we think that there could have been a lot more production had that not happened. But you know, the biggest thing that we were proud of us of was that guys in backup roles came in that game and stepped up. You know, on the offensive line, in the backfield, in the receiving core, the quarterback position. You know, a lot of backups are playing, right? And we're still being very productive, and so that means that they're bought in. They're listening. They're doing what they're coached to do. And the guys ahead of them are helping coaching them up. I mean, you look on the sidelines during the game, you see all those guys over there coaching them up, telling them what's going on, interacting with them, helping them out. And so it was, it was a good team, um, you know, productive day from our point of view. You know, I've really always enjoyed sitting down and talking to you because I'm a defensive guy. I mean, you all have always talked about that. And I really do enjoy talking to you. I think you need to tell the Cardinal fans, you were talking about why maybe a backup does a little bit better than a guy starting, whether you believe or not he comes in and surprises people because he does the little things that he has to do at practice. Yeah, a lot of times guys in backup roles may be lacking experience or strength or athleticism, right. and it just depends on where they are in their, in their maturation. And so they have to be really fine-tuned fine into technique, exactly what the assignment tells them to do. And so when they get in there, that's what they have to rely on. So you know, they may not be able to bowl someone over, right. but they take good technique, good assignment. You know, they're a little bit more uh, probably crafty than the guys ahead of them because that's the way they have to survive. And, you know, we saw that a lot in the game and on film that they did a good job of handling that. And that's what allowed them to, to be productive and allow us to continue to run our offense. So, Well, during the course of a practice here, Joel, uh, your, your number two is how many reps do they get? I actually, that question was asked by a father <laughs> at Tanner's yeah. after the game. And, he, and I said, you know, I haven't been to practice since last year. Yeah. I said, but, you know, usually about maybe, if they're lucky, one-third of the snaps. And that's probably, I told him, probably a high percentage. Uh, and so those kids really don't even get a great amount. They know game plan. Oh, yeah. They know game plan. And that was obvious from the success you had yeah. with all the kids you just talked about. But, but usually how many backup rep-wise were you looking at? Probably a quarter to a third. You know, I would say so that. So I was close. You know, yeah, you're very close. I, mean, I think a third, a third in the high end. So if, you know, we go to a session where there's 20 plays, We'll roll the ones through 14, 15 plays, right. and then we'll get the twos that's in kind there. Of thing, yeah. yeah, so I mean it's a quarter, and sometimes it's even less. Like so, you that's said, never I mean, changed. No, it really that's hasn't. Basic. It really hasn't. And you expect, and, and coaches kind of come off to the side, and you talk to the backups as the play is going on, going, "Hey, do you see what's happening here? Where's your check going to be? Do you understand what they're doing here?" And try to try to get them on the side as you go, and then talk to the guys who just ran the play as they're coming back to the huddle. So it's kind of a constant coaching there you try to do and now we're lucky here because we get a chance to go back and watch it on film sure you know um, and so they get to you know get three or four reps mentally those backups and that's what they have to rely on they have to rely on okay I've seen this coach has talked about it so when I when I see it live I have to just go back to the pictures in my mind as opposed to having having the chance to do it you know physically you know, I think a lot, well, all the time, uh, sports programs, particularly football, that we're all familiar with, is judged by W's. But I, I really, I, I'm older than dirt. I, I see so much improvement. I talked to Coach Cruzy at the, at the coach show afterwards. 
from where we were three or four years ago to where we are now, particularly in the skill area, particularly mm -hmm. on offense, the things that we can do and what you're doing with them. Uh, don't you kind of feel the same way? Absolutely. I, I think that um, you know the, the talent level has gotten better every year. Uh, you know the fight has, has been there. You know we've had guys since we got here fighting and competing, and uh, you know depth's improved, and that helps competition overall. So the next man in, uh, you know, we, we don't have as you know big of a you know drop off at times. Uh, so we're playing a little bit more experienced guys in those backup roles. But you know it's it's been a lot of improvement, and I think they're really seeing and buying into the fact that uh, you know really the, the people who are uh, stopping us are ourselves. You know, the, the turnovers that we've had in some crucial, uh, crucial situations, some very, you know, you know, we're knocking on the, you know, the goal line and we have, uh, you know, a fumble or a, an interception. And, and really there's only, you look back in the film and you go, there's only no one here to blame but ourselves. And, yeah. and, and, I, and I know that's, that's coach speak because on defense you say the same thing on offense. Hey, guys, you know, we didn't do this here. Uh, you know, but, you know, we'll be the first to tell the guys, hey, guys, they outnumbered us here and, you know, they got us. But these are, you know, the situations that, um, you know, we're really stopping ourselves to a point, and they're and they're understanding that and believing that, and going, okay, you know, we we control our own output here, and it, that's only going to help us improve more. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, we've got about a minute left, so I got to kind of wrap this up. But I think you've really done a good job of providing more skill depth. But like you said, it seems like it really bites us in the foot a lot. Uh, in the years I've covered mm -hmm. you guys, is that when we get injuries in the offensive line. I really feel like that that's been a big difference. So yeah. I'm talking about your side of the ball. Do you feel the same way? It has before because the guys that we've been putting in there are guys just, just don't have as much experience and as much ability uh, just to rely on. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the ability to rely on experience and or being in the weight room where the guys who have been able to throw in there now, they've got more experience. They've been in the weight room longer. You know, so if they're the next man in, uh, we don't drop off as much. You know, where in the past it's been, you know, a really green player that we've been throwing in there that hasn't had much experience of, of a college weight room or, or a college meeting room and, you know, so on and so forth. So. Well, Coach, we're going to wrap up this segment and we're going to come back with Coach Cruz in the last segment. But if you will promise me that we'll get 528 yards every ball game and score 48 <laughs> points, I would really appreciate it. It's doing the color that, for, for weeks. That would be all, of our, that'd be all of our goals. I wish I Well, know, Coach, so. yeah, can you stay with it. Like you said, yes, it's sir. all about improvement and, uh, you know, keep the good fight going. Okay? Thank you very much. We'll come right back to the next segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. Poor Boy Oil Company is and always has been locally owned and operated. We promise convenience and service with small town values. We want you to choose Poor Boy again and again, whether you're looking for a hot cup of coffee to help start your day, grabbing lunch at midday, picking up milk at the end of the day, or heading for a Cardinal game any day. We're here to help you get you on your way quickly. Most doors are open 24 hours, so we're here when you need us. Poor Boy Oil Company. Find us around the Northland wherever the Cardinals fly. A helpful smile with local grown and homegrown produce. What we do is find the best local growers. We'll contract with the best local growers right down the street from your store. It comes right from the farm to hy -Vee. Farmers you know, the people in your communities. We even have signs that tell you which farm it was grown on. It's pretty much like a farmer's market in here. You can't get any fresher than that unless you pick it yourself. I am a helpful. Farm fresh. Sustainable. Local. Homegrown. Bringing you the freshest produce smile. And that's my promise. Cardinal fans, welcome back to Inside the Cardinal Playbook in our final segment. We're talking this week's opponent, Fort Hayes State, and I'm an OMI AA guy, Me so too. I know, and <laughs> you talk about a tough schedule. They're 0-4, but I think you need to be careful. Why don't you talk about who they played and where they're at so far in their season? I'll tell you what I told our team Sunday, you know, after meetings, and, and I said, hey, you're going to play on next Saturday an 0-4 football team that's going to have the best personnel you've seen all year. And, uh, you know, here's the thing about their schedule, and I know their coach very well, and we've talked a few times this week and, and last week just about film exchanges. And sure. I haven't talked extensively, but, you know, 
the out of the four teams they've played, they're they're zero and four. The four teams they played are all four and zero in top twenty five in the country. So they had. It's not like they went out and played. They weren't playing yeah, sisters. In the no, play. they went out and played the best of the best and haven't fared very well. But uh, make no bones about it. That's a good football team with good personnel, well coached, and uh, we're going to go on the road for a night game. You know, out in Western Kansas and and. Uh, if you're from Hayes, you'll say it's Central Kansas, but right. but uh, but out there and there's going to be tough. They're going to be tough and they're going to be physical and they're going to, you know, they're they're ready for a win. They're hungry for a win, just like we are, even maybe more so because they haven't haven't tasted that yet this year. So and it's their homecoming, which is a big deal out in the city out there. And there's going to be people everywhere and should be a great environment. We've got to we've got to be better than we've been uh, this coming Saturday. To, uh, to get a victory, and, and that's everything we're focusing on from now and until that point. You know, I know you don't like to get the cat out of the bag, but just give the Cardinal fans some idea what to look for. A lot of them will be following it on the Internet and mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, we're looking at a spread look and, uh, on offense. Uh, you know, what are we going to be looking at Offensively, they're, they're a little bit different than what they've maybe been in the past. They've got a really good athlete, at quarterback, and they're, they're running some more of the zone read stuff with, with some three-step game and some – you know, getting them out of the pocket stuff along with it and, you know, handing it off in the run game to two really good tailbacks. Um, you know, it, it, they're they're pretty dynamic at some of those positions, at their skill positions. And, you know, they, they've got tough physical kids up front on the offensive line. So, you know, there'll be a challenge for us. Again, it'll be the best offensive personnel we've seen to this point, in my opinion, uh, this year. I mean, similar to Valpo, maybe just a little even a little bit better. And uh, on the defensive side of the ball, they're uh, – they're a four-two-five defense, which is you know it's a it's a four-three nickel essentially um, a setup. And and their head coach was prior to taking the head coaching job at Hayes was the defensive coordinator at Washburn for a lot of years and uh, ran this defense and ran it really well as good as anybody. And uh, so they know what they're doing. Again, they've got good personnel on defense as well. They're they're really athletic and, and good up on the defensive line. They've got some some you know juniors and seniors at the linebacker position and and a senior at the safety a couple of the safety positions and you know they got some length at corner they're six one and six two at the corner positions and and uh so again it's going to be the best personnel we we line up against and this in the kicking game anytime you're we're talking about personnel your kicking game is going to be uh personnel very well as well and and we've got to be able to you know handle those things in all phases of the game yeah, you know, uh, when you got a situation, and, and we talk about the MIAA, and I'm not really the lead promoter of it. These mm -hmm. are facts. I'm not living in a bubble. It might be the best conference, football conference division two in the country. Yeah, you know, I think you can, on a five-year basis, I think you could look at it, you know, over a five-year period and definitely make that argument. I, I was fortunate enough to play in that conference and then coach in it for, for a number of years, and, and uh, boy, there's just no – there's no break in that conference. I mean, it's top to bottom. You're going to go out and battle every week, and it is you know tough. it's it's a you know with four, five, six top 25 teams at different points during the season, and that's you know that's a tall order to have to a conference like that. But you know we feel like our conference is doing some really good things too, and you know we've got had several top 25s to start the season, and and uh, we're you know we're, we're making our name a little bit. Uh, you going to leave Friday? Leaving Friday, yep. So you'll yep. have a night in the hotel with the team again. I know you yeah. like that. That's one time you get to sleep. You know, hey, our our win this year came on the road, and it was a focused win, and, and guys, you know, prepared the right way. And, and uh, so we'll have some time, and then we'll have some time together on Saturday with it being a night game uh, to to uh, get focused, you know, more more so there as well. And it'll be a, hopefully a great game and a, and a uh, enjoyable three, four, five trip, five hour trip home. You know, uh, Cardinal fans, if uh, hopefully you can come and support us over at Fort Hayes State, that'd be great. We'd like to have every one of you dressed in red and ready to roll. If you can't make it, I know that you need to probably enjoy it. Hopefully, Rick, I don't know if you do me, but at least have both of us on just, uh, uh, trying to describe the ball game. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, again, I really respect what you've done with your program. You know, we've had an MIAA uh, team on our schedule ever since I've been yep. doing this with yep. you. So, you know, I, you know how I believe you. In order to be yeah. the best, you got to play the best. No doubt about it. Someday you want to be there where yep. those people are, and I congratulate you on that. Hang in there, stay with it, and I know you will. 
And that it, uh, concludes this uh, portion of Inside the uh, Cardinal Playbook. Once again, it's a 7 o'clock start. I want to remind that, everybody that. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll see you over at Fort A. State and Kansas.